happy Sunday to you all. I hope that you are very well today. Yes, so it took us a little bit of extra time setting up because today we are also going live on Instagram simultaneously. So we are on YouTube and Instagram. So hello to Instagramers. That's right. <laughs> just give us a few seconds. We're just having some issues with the sound. Right, can you just go on the, this one? Yeah. Can you put this on? Yeah. Okay, all right, so... We should be good to go now, for you. All, all, <laughs> all, all our problems of sound should be resolved. So, a very welcome to you guys. It's quite a process, but we love it. And we're here four days a week. We are, and today is our Sunday uh, class for beginners first, uh, starting now and intermediates and up and advanced at 3 p.m. Uh, so we have a very special program today, no? We do. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yes, so today is all about VATS. So as you probably know, uh, if you don't, I'm going to give a quick uh, summary, but if you don't really know, VATS is one of the three uh, dances and uh, music in uh, tango. So we have tango, VATS and milonga. so tomorrow, uh, today, we are looking at VATS. But before we do that, we have a few things to uh Yes, to you know the drill already, some of you, the people who have been joining our classes on a regular basis. And again, thank you. So, uh, what we start? So, I'd like to, uh, to start by asking where you're watching this from. Yes, yeah. so for the, the people city. on YouTube and people on Instagram, just let us know. We'd love to know where you're watching these videos from. So, your city, your country, whichever you like. Um, and uh, to I would also be curious yes. if, if they could let us know the time zone. All right. Why and not? if you want to, you know, because we, we, you know, it's fun for us. We had uh, once we had someone from New Zealand who was watching this at seven in the morning. So I thought, oh my god, this is really, <laughs> really severe to wake up at seven to actually do a tango class. But you know, so it's really uh, proving how dedicated yes. you can be. You you set your alarm for five a.m. <laughs> then you have your coffee, you do your yoga exercises, you go for a little run, and then you come back. You go and walk the dog. <laughs> you have a lot of time. Then you come back and you can do your class at seven a.m. That and really that would. So so not work for me. And then you go to bed at 3 in the afternoon, no? Yeah, and That's then you, you sleep the rest of the day. <laughs> Why not? We even had someone from New Caledonia in the Pacific. So. And Tanzania. And Tanzania. Tanzania. Yeah. I can't Amazing. remember, yeah, I can't I remember now all the places, but it's astonishing that we can reach so far. So, a quick word uh, to start. Uh, we are uh, giving this class today on VAS, then on Tuesday is our next class. This is our Tango workout. And what this is, if you haven't uh, tried, it's very, very exciting uh, 45 minutes workout where you're going to sweat a little bit, or a lot, hopefully. Um, and we're going to go through tango and milonga routines very, very fast to get you uh, your pulse racing. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday? On Wednesday, we have, of course, our weekly beginners and intermediates and up class. So that's 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. Then we are back on Friday for our technique and styling that 7 p.m. leaders, 8 p.m. followers. That's it. So on Wednesday, we are going to look at musicality with Osvaldo Pugliese. And on Friday, we do our last uh, chant on body mechanics. So a very, very interesting topic that we started just Friday uh, last week. And then, of course, we are back on Sunday, like today, for another afternoon class, 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And uh, lastly but not least, if you forget about the schedule, the, we are everywhere with um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we still don't have Twitter, maybe that's mm, something we, we should try. We should try. We, we should try. Okay. But you can visit our website, so it's Paulo Duarte Tango and it's Tanguido.co.uk okay. and you can find all these information plus all the videos that you may have missed on. Alright, so. We are going to start with our beginner class, so today is about vals, uh, and before I even do talk about the music, I'm going to play a little bit of it, and we are going to play a little bit of this, which is Alberto Castillo. <laughs> Clap your hands, shake your head, 
check your bag whatever you like to buy the bits. This is what we call the strong beats. So, unlike tango, um, if you have never heard of vals before, it's uh, spelled with V by the way, as in Victor, not W. Uh, of course, it's coming What's from the walls, you. you know, it's very like, strongly influenced by the Viennese walls. Remember that all the immigrants from south of Europe going to Buenos Aires uh, in uh, mid uh, 19th century. Some of them, of course, were trained musical, uh, musically, uh, they are musicians, and uh, some of them actually knew the war, so they would import that with them in uh, their bags, if you like, in their luggage. And this is why we have a little bit of uh, this um, uh, influence on tango, and it's actually, of course, always adapted to tango, uh, the, the dance as well, but it's vals with a V. Now, the waltz, or sorry, the vals, which is interesting to uh, mention is, the fact that you have a strong beat and uh, two weak beats in the middle. So if you go, if you look at tango, tango is very linear. It's a strong beat and a half beat in between. So it's strong, half, strong, half. Now, vals is very, very different because it's one, two, three. The two and three mean they are, are being the um, uh, weak beats, right? So a lot of the time we're going to stay with the strong beat and occasionally we're going to play with the two or the three. So the way we count is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. If you are a musician, it could be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Note that as I'm doing the one, I'm actually emphasizing the way I say it because it's also the way it is played in the music. It's not one, two, three, it's one, two, three, one, two, three. So there is a strong beat, and this beat is the beat we are going to work with. So this is a little bit of an introduction on that. So I'm going to go back with a few more details later. But for now, we are going to go back to uh, what we have to do when we start uh, preparing for vowels. And you'll be happy to hear that most of the technique that we develop for tango is going to be adapted to vowels with a little, a few modifications. Modifications are a little bit more advanced, so we might just a few have a look at a few of them here now and have uh, a bit more details during the intermediate lesson. So this it is what... It should be at 3 p.m. For, by the way, for the ones who don't know. Exactly. So, what we are going to start with is always, as uh, usual, the postures, you have your feet together, you have a nice stretch here, and you have your head a uh, little bit, uh, obviously, straight, like uh, in, the, in its natural alignment. And if I look from the side, if I show you from the side, I'm going to go a little bit back to the hips as we do normally in tango, so this doesn't change with the bars. <coughs> now, a little, a little something for improvers that already know a bit of tango. What I would like to say is in valves, when you dance, there's a little bit of more an extra hip displacement, if you like. So in tango, it might be a bit more still. In valves, we have a little bit of more of this happening, especially when you go forward, because this is to go with the roundness of the music. The, the music is very round, and of course there's lots of pivots and turns in the bounce, uh, and this is something that you, we also um, interpret by having a bit of hip movement from side to side. So once I have my posture sorted, I'm going to do the same as when, uh, when I do in tango. I'm going to project with the, uh, the free leg, I'm going to push with the back leg, and I'm going to arrive in the middle here, and I'm going to push with my back foot here before I collect. Note that I don't use, as usual, my torso to go forward. My torso stays quite straight. And I'm going forward and I push to arrive in axis here. Right, so this is how it works. I'm going to play the song and we just go around the room on the beats. If you want to do it with me, that'd be great. Here we go. <laughs> So, 
I would like to move on to followers. Yes, That's let's nice. do it. So big hello for everyone who's joining us from Europe. Uh, different countries again, so it's lovely. I always like to sneak out on the side and see what okay. people are typing. So guys, sure. if you have any questions throughout the class, don't hesitate, drop them in the comment section. We always do our best to keep up, to catch up with you. Okay, let's right. have a look at the, uh, the back step. Okay, so generally, as a follower, when we're going back, it doesn't really matter if it's boss or tango, okay? The very first thing that needs to happen is the communication from the leader that the weight is going to change. So you liberate one of the legs, in this case my free leg is available, and I'm then going to receive indication from my leader to go towards the back by receiving an impulse that is going to allow me to project the back, uh, the leg towards the back, okay? Now, this position can be turn out or turn in, parallel or turn out. This is a question of preference in styling. So when I am receiving the impulse to go back, I'm going to go first through my standing leg that is going to push towards the middle position. So I am going to start transferring through pushing the standing leg. And now, this moment, the leg should be no longer turned out, but it should turn in. So the weight is much more sustained in the middle of the foot, of the toes, and not just in the big toe, because that's really bad for your uh, joint of the big toe, okay? So now the weight is more or less in the middle, and I'm going to continue transferring the weight by pushing from the forward leg into the back and dropping the heel down. I'm going to come back to axis, okay, one more time. I'm going to project, elongating a little bit of tilt in the pelvis, so that I can create space for my projection and for the leader's leg. And pushing from the standing leg towards the middle, passing through the toes, the heel is still off the floor. And now, heel goes down, I'm going to keep transferring my center to the standing leg. I'm going to do it one more time and a little bit faster. Transferring the weight, projecting, push, transfer, collect. Project, push, transfer, collect. Project, push, transfer, collect. Hopefully that is making a lot of sense. See, we continue? Yes, we do it together. Uh -huh. Okay, so as I mentioned to you, the hold uh, and most of the technique for tango is the same for valves, with the exception that we have a little bit more uh, hip displacement, but that's very tiny, of course. So let's uh, try this together. we have the one, two and three, so here we just moved or we just walked on the one or uh, also called the strong beat or the main beat if you like. Now what we are going to do now is we are going to walk on the one and the three which produces a little bit of a syncopea. So what does it mean? In, um, as opposed to tango where the beat and the half beat are every time at the same distance to each other, the one and the three, of course, there's a longer time between one and three, and three in the next one. If you look at the way the time is structured, the time signature, if you like, the one and the three is two thirds of a second, and then between the three and the one is one third of a second. So therefore, 
1 and 3 this seems slow, and then 3, 1 seems, seems fast. So this is what it's going to sound like if you start playing with the time signature of the bass. try to do here is one we work a little bit here and then the, the three ones very quick here work a bit more and three one yes so it's irregular in nature should we try yeah all right let's, do it. let's play with the rhythm uh, and by the way this is an exercise of course but we're going to use it uh, in uh, when the little uh, thing that we prepare for you guys later so this is why we introduce it now so maybe independent for now without a partner just looking forward. Yes. So I'm going to go left forward. One, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. Pump, pump, pump. One, three, one, three, one. Pump, pump, pump. second way because the first way is being on the one only. Here we use the three and we ignore the two as uh, Paula did at the end, she did which is basically one, two, three, one. Okay? Of course we are tempted to say one, two, three, four, but the four is actually the next beat, therefore it's also one. So that would be one, two, three, one. And of course uh, I'm sure that you realize that in the music, in vals, we also have a bit of phrasing which means at the end of a phrase, often we have where all the one, two and threes are at equal volume in the music, so we want to do something a bit quicker, okay? This is more for intermediate for now, we are going to simplify a little bit for the beginners, um, and we are still going to look at the one, three, one as a single pair that we want to play with in our dancing. Okay, so, uh, anything you want to add on fast? Uh, not just yet, but I'm definitely ready to move on to the next assignment. Okay, which I'll move on. Of course, <laughs> I am. All right. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to do. Uh, we are going to play with basically a step forward and a step back with a change of weight. So I'm going to show you the structure for the leaders first, and then Paula is going to show you the structure for the follower. We have two parts in the structure. We are going to look at the first one just now. So I'm going to start by having my weight on the left leg. And I'm going to go right forward, I'm going to show you how, mm -hmm. when it comes to or how I'm positioned with my partner. I'm going to go forward with the right, and I'm going to go one, 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 here. Yes, so basically, I'm going to go one, two, three, and then I stop here. Would you mind showing it with the back to the camera? Of course. We know you guys like that. <laughs> so I'm going to go. One, two, three, and then here I'm going to do a small side step. One, bam, bam, and a small side step. Yes? Mm -hmm. Round, bam, bam, and a small side step. So I'm just going to use the, um, the main beat for now, and I'm going to play with the musicality in a moment. Shall I show this part? Absolutely. Okay, okay. Yes. So, so what happens here, I have my beat on my right leg. And we're going to go back, shifting the weight, and forward, and a small side step. 
One more time. Back, shift the weight. If you can really see, make it very visible, the shift of the weight. Make it very assertive and visible. And forward, and small side step. Mm -hmm. So let's do maybe... I'm doing the leader's part and you're doing the follow's part again. I'm starting on my left leg, follow's on the right. I'm going forward and she's going backwards. One, two, three, and a small side step here. And one, two, three, and a small side step. Know that as I'm doing the side step, again, I play a little bit with the hips. One, two, three. And you can see there's a bit of displacement here before I go. One, two, three, and displacement here. One. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. One. You know, it's a very good point because when you make this very, very clear, this transfer of the weight very clearly as a leader, you are also communicating in a very clear way to the follower that the weight needs to change. So I totally agree that the drop of the hip, it's a plus. <laughs> I love it. Good, good. I'm happy you agree. <laughs> okay, so this is how it looks. We're going to keep the arm brace open to show you the mechanics. And of course, if you are uh, improving or intermediate, we uh, encourage you to start closing the arm brace. Basically, I'm going to start on my uh, left, is on the right here, and I'm going to go outside. Here is actually called the inner lane, but I'm going to actually here before. I change my weight and I go back. When I'm going back here, she's actually in this position here, which means she's using my lane. Yes, she's not on the outside here. So, of course, both versions are possible. But let me show you forward front of the camera. I'm going to go one, two, three, and a small side step here. And one, two, three, and a small side step. Now, I'd like to uh, indicate one thing. When I go forward, there's a little bit more energy than when I go back. What does that mean? I'm going to push a little bit more with the back leg here when I go forward, and I'm going just to relax when I go back. So the back step is going to be easier for leaders because it's actually easier to read for the follower to go back, sorry, to go forward than to go back. One more time. So I'm going to be on this leg here. I'm going to go forward, change, back, and small side step. One, two, three, and two seconds. So let's put some music quickly and then we'll show you the rest of the sequence. Here. turn of course because of limited space so my step is not going to be forward and back and a side step because eventually I lack a bit of space here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn a little bit onto my left leg so that I change the angle so I'm going to open a bit the left leg so it makes me turn a little bit around so I don't have the problem of space so first in this situation for me would be the same thing I keep adjusting to the leader, so the more turn he gives, the more turn I have to adjust to. Should we have a look at uh, the second part, maybe? Yeah? yeah? What do you guys think? Yes, I think, <laughs> I think you agree, no? <laughs> okay, so basically... I can hear, yes. Yeah, I, yeah, can yeah, hear yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear it. I can hear it. From across the road, yes. Yeah, ah, so the so. special sense I can hear. <laughs> okay, we will You know what's on. very interesting for me to know? is uh, we know we have one student uh, who is just literally 30 meters away 
Uh, you're watching this from his home, so this is very, very I don't want to say any names, just, no, just no because names. he doesn't want to And the same time, from what we saw, there are people uh, watching from 6,000 kilometers or miles. It's incredible, if yeah. you think about it, it's incredible. It's such yeah. a luxury, guys, isn't it? It is. Love it. Yeah. Okay, so this is the second part of what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for, uh, so sideways, I'm going to change my weight, and I go sideways again. As simple as that. What is the change of weight? Uh, between two side steps. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and then here, you know the, the small side step, I'm going to do a little pose. So one, two, three, one pose, one, two, three, one pose. Yes? I'll show you again, facing, sorry, back to the camera. I'm going to start to the right, one, two, three, little pose for one beat. And then one, two, three, little pause with one beat. One, two, three, pause. One, two, three, pause. Follow us. So mm -hmm. maybe we we'll do it together. Yeah, let's do it together. So maybe like here and here for leaders and followers. Mm -hmm. So. You want me to see once? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start to the left. I'm going one, two, three, pause. One, two, three. Pose, mm -hmm. and then we repeat. Okay. All right. So now I know what I must do. <laughs> okay. So we have one, back, two, change, three, forward, pause, and one, double sides. Two, three. Pause. <laughs> I and think then, we have to do this on different lanes. I think. Let's do it this way. Yes. Okay. I'll show you guys uh, with this front, and then we turn around and we do the other front. So. Okay. So one, back, two, change. Forward, so straps and one, double two, three, side step. Pose and again. One, one two, two, forward, so straps, right, two, close, right, three, close. close. Let's do it facing the other way, no? Mm -hmm. Okay, here. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting with the right and she's starting with the left. So one, two, three, pose, one, two, three. Pause. And. One, two, three, pause. One, two, three, pause. So That's the pause is uh, the pause is the collection, yeah. So it's, there is movement, but we slow down. But there is still movement. The collection. It's a collection. So it's the pause. What we refer as Not a pause. Not the street pause. collection, but the tango collection. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's try. It. Go. So it's going to be one, two, three, pause. One, two, three. Pause. One, two, three, pause. One, two, three, pause. Now, I like to indicate to leaders that the change of weight when you're going forward, if you have a little bit of a push and going up, is going to be automatic as you relax. Let's have a look at the leader a little bit for a second here. I'm going to push the back leg, I'm going to scoop under, and I'm going to lift my partner and relax. This actually makes a change of weight to that leg here. And then as I go, Sideways, I'm going to go a little bit up. So I'm going to go a little bit on my toes and a little bit of twisted um, axis. So I'm going left and right here and I finish here. Yes, yeah, so let's do it again from here. Here. One and two pause. One and two pause. One and two and pause. One and two and pause. So let's try this music mm -hmm. because I like to show how it looks with the music, of course. Ideally, mm -hmm. um, for improvers and up, what I would like to say is when I say one, it's not by chance, it's actually you catch the start of the phrase. The one of the phrase is when I go with my one forward, and this is the intended effect. Mm -hmm. Would you mind actually show them in the counts of the one to three so that they can do it? That, so if I show them. Yeah. To show you mean. So just to show for the counting, the actual counting of yeah, the sure. levels. So we would have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, wait. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, wait. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, wait. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, wait. Maybe this makes even more sense now. Okay, let's, yes. let's try it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 
for improvers because you have time to play at the pose. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go one, two, three, back rows. One, two, three, back rows. Yes, I'll show you on this side here. One, two, three, back rows. One, two, three, back rows. And then I carry again. So I believe in equal rights, so I have to give now one declaration for well. ladies. Do as well. oh, okay. <laughs> Just I wasn't prepared for this moment. <laughs> but I can come up with a decoration, it's fine. So let me see. Mm -hmm. So okay. one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. That's one possibility. The other possibility would be a picky, for example. One two three, 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 one two three. See? Now completely equal. Now we are completely equal. Good. Good. All right. Let's do it with music. Yes. Let's do it with music. than trying, you know, mm -hmm. how it feels with the other world. So this is very, very, exactly. very good advice. So you can concentrate on that now. It's a good time. To okay. Do so. so let me show quickly what the leader is going to do in terms of rhythm. I'm going to start exactly the same structure, but I'm going to go one, three, one, one, three, one. Yes, can you see? 
The acceleration here is happening as I go back and as I do my side step here. So I show you back to the camera with music. <laughs> for Instagram. So we, I'd like to ask you for the Instagram viewers if you can let us know uh, whether the position of the frame uh, is it's fine because uh, obviously uh, we're still learning about this Instagram live process so we would really appreciate some feedback and also whether the quality is uh, coming through alright or if you need to refresh then please do so. Okay. So, we are going to do the same, maybe separate it for now. Okay. Mm -hmm. With the timing, the right timing. So, I'm going to go. One, three, one. One, three, one. One, three, one. One, three, one. Yes, let's try one more time from here. Let's do maybe a little bit more. Okay. So, one, three, one. One, three, one. One, three, one. One, three, one. Let's uh, do with the other front. Absolutely. <laughs> so from here. Yes. Yeah. One, three, one. One, three, one. One, three, one. One, three, one. Now a little tip for leaders. Leaders, how do you communicate to your partner you want her to change the weight? Earlier it was easier because you had the full beats. Can I show it? Earlier it was like a little bit of a pendulum, pom, pom, it's easy, just a little bit of swaying, that is all that she needed to understand, she needed to change the weight here. Now, there's one other way which is also very efficient, that we also use in tango, which is lifting your partner. So what does it mean? I'm going to start here, I'm going to go onto my toes, and I'm going to change my weight as I'm in my toes, and I'm going to relax on this next step here. So this is how it looks. Pum, pum, pum. Yes? Of course, it's going to be next to impossible for the leader to completely have exactly the right timing for the lead uh, to indicate he wants to go on the 3 1. Now, of course, as usual, there's a little bit of contextual information. So, followers, if you feel that your leaders are going 1 3 1, then pum, pum, pum makes sense, of course, rather than going uh, 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 which is more linear, a bit uh, more time mm -hmm. I also would like to say one thing if you agree. Uh, I have the feeling that when the leader is leading me um, a little bit of this uh, tilt, so yes. it's usually for simple time. Boom, yes. boom, boom, boom. However, I'm sorry to cover you. <laughs> However, when it is fast, I feel that they keep me up. Yep, pop, pop. So, that because it's a little bit less time they have to indicate the shift of the weight it really helps me to understand if i am being lifted it means it's going to be a quicker shift of the weight exactly so let's see how it goes you agree absolutely i agree, oh, I agree. i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm going to start with my one three one one three one can you see what's happening here I'm going one, I go on my toes, I change and I relax on my left here. Mm -hmm. So let's do it a few times. Here. One, three, one, 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 one, three, one. Can I give one tip? One tip. One tip from Not one two tip only. Not two. Uh, I can't promise that. <laughs> okay. You know me. Perfect. Usually it's, it's more than one thing. But anyway, uh, you know that there's one tip I want to say for leaders that really makes this very, very comfortable for the followers. So pay attention if you want to make your follower feel comfortable. And what he... they don't? Then I think you have a problem. <laughs> is that on that back step, so it's the forward step for the leaders, 
that you are not uh, facing completely forward, but you have a little bit of um, this association towards your follower. And then here, that is going to come back to neutral, to neutral at the end. Mm -hmm. It makes sense, no? Absolutely. We like it when it makes sense. Okay. So, should we do it with music? Yeah. Things for uh, leaders and followers. Um, it's very, very important here, as you saw and uh, as um, uh, Paula just mentioned right now, that there is a difference of uh, intensity and intent when you go forward and back. This I mentioned earlier, but this, uh, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to flex a little bit my knee and I go up here and I relax. So, of course, I'm not going all the way. Up here, I don't need to, but a little bit. Yes? So that actually will help me when I relax onto the other leg to communicate this quick shadow of weight because, of course, this is not very, very uh, slow. So the uh, follower needs to pick up the signal. Hum, hum, hum. That change of level, it makes a really, really big difference. So for me, it's very clear. With that scoop, I like to call it a scoop. Yes. Not sure why, but it works. <laughs> a scoop and because then... We've have I had ice cream quite a few times in the I think, I think we, because we have been a lot of ice cream, uh, that's actually cream, true fact. Oh God, yeah. That's true fact. But that's okay, moving on from <laughs> that. So when you have that um, kind of wavy scooping movement, then you know we're coming back up with a release. It's very, very clear communication that the weight is going to be changing. And of course, we appreciate that clarity, especially because it's double time. Change of And that's another no reason. Uh -huh. Because in a phrase, in a vowels, the one is always stronger than all the other beats, or at least the one and the five. It's ra ta 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 ra. Yeah, it's really kind of stronger, therefore you emphasize a little bit the way you walk and you add a bit, a bit more weight in your dancing. Sometimes the one is the strongest of all and sometimes the, way, the one is equal to the five in the phrasing. So this is more for intermediates. Mm, but uh, we're going to speak, yeah, we're going to continue speaking a little bit more about this on the next class. Which, by the way, yes, look at the time, I can't believe it. Oh, this. yes, it's very, <laughs> very time. So, what yeah. we'd like to maybe um, do is, we're going to just have a quick word around um, tickets. Uh, some of you are not aware of the process, so this is a class which is open on YouTube and um, Instagram. Uh, Instagram. However, of course, this is our only source of income. So we uh, hope that if you can afford it, if you haven't been affected by the crisis, that you can purchase a ticket or make a donation. And we're going to put uh, the link in a second. Uh, leave it for one minute, uh, for a quick moment, uh, so that you can do it if you like. I think we're going to leave it actually on the break, which is about 10 minutes. Okay, That's fine. what we... we... Okay, okay, fine. So, uh, so do you want to demonstrate now or do you want Absolutely. to go through the... Okay, so demonstrate now, don't go anywhere because we have a lot in store for you also in the second class. All right, let's do it.
Sorry, your next intermediate class. Uh, we're going to go through a few cadenas which are absolutely lovely to play with the rhythm. Nice, okay. Here we go. Good. So, so see you in about 13, 20 minutes. Okay, see you soon, guys.
Hello again, beautiful people. We are back. Hello. So um, we checked. I think we are a little bit tilted somehow. I'm not sure why. So I decided. It's better now. It's it's better. I decided yeah, that we we better. teach all session <laughs> this way to compensate for the uh, the tilt of the, the phone. I don't know? think so. No? <laughs> no. Come on. <laughs> if you push on me, I think we should be fine. And you want to do a whole class like that? Yes, I'm not sure it's sustainable. It's like, it's like teaching on the boat, no? Teaching on the boat. Um, yeah. Yeah. I never, I actually I did, I did, yes, I did teach on the boat. It's um, very interesting. But it doesn't stay tilted. Oh, it shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't. I guess, I guess. Anyway, guys, we hope you had a great break. We are back for our Fluvian uh, Intermediates. Tango class, Intermediates and top. Exactly, so uh, if you just joined us, a quick question, where are you watching this from? If you're uh, either from YouTube or Instagram, but which city you're watching this from, it's very interesting for us mm -hmm. to know. Also, so that you know, we, are, we tend to, because we have so many phones, cameras and screens, we sometimes might be looking at the different screen because of this reason, if you're wondering. It is true, <laughs> it is true. I count three at least. Yes, I think they can even see in the mirror that, that yes. if we, if we, yeah, it's a bit far, they won't see. <laughs> but anyway, so let's go very, very quickly through the schedule for the ones who are not familiar with our classes yet. So uh, we have a class, our next class is on Tuesday. This is our tango workout. This is to make you sweat a little, um, have a bit of exercise at home. It's a completely solo dancer. Uh, session so uh, it's actually designed for people by the, themselves. Of course, it's fun if you do it with a with a partner next to you. But it's not. You can together. even yeah no, it's not nothing together. But you can even keep your two meter if you're lucky enough to have a big space. You can even keep. I your... think it's fine at home. I think it's fine. <laughs> yes, you have two sofas. Um, so this is our Tuesday. Then next uh, Wednesday, uh, next class is Wednesday, uh, and uh, we have a special program on Wednesday because we are going to have a look at our first musicality. A workshop which is Osvaldo Pugliese, one of my favorites. And the program for that evening? The program for that evening, please invite me. <laughs> 7 p.m. beginners. Oh, you meant the, the, the program, the, the time. The time, yes, yes. I thought you, you meant content, ah, that, right. to be more specific about content. I just, yes. yeah, mentioned it. So, Wednesday evenings is always 7 and 8 p.m. UK time, and any time that we refer to is always UK, that's where we are streaming. The classes from. Then on Friday we have our technique and styling class, uh, which is a great again for uh, great for solo dancers. Yes, actually it is, it is designed yeah. for dancers. And next uh, this coming week is about body mechanics, which is our last second part edition. Of the series, second edition, exactly. Second edition. So that's 7 p.m. leaders, 8 p.m. followers. And then of course we're back on Sunday for another lovely afternoon class. All right. And uh, again, if you miss any of the classes, so uh, you can visit the libraries on both our websites, or you can contact us through YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the platforms you can possibly think of. Okay. Not all, but almost, almost all of them. Almost. So shall we start? Exactly. So basically, I'd like to start with a very, very quick word for uh, people who just joined about the vals, the music. So we introduced the vals in the beginner class just uh, about 45 minutes ago. Uh, but what we uh, would like to point uh, out, to bring to your attention, is the fact that the time signature of the vals is a little bit different from tango. It's just a reminder for you intermediates, of course. You are going to have uh, to walk on the beat, on the main beat, and you can walk on the second or third uh, beat in between two beats. That means you are going to go with the one, the one and three, and the one and two. Now, one little thing for intermediates, uh, one and three is very common, is pam, 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 but one and two, uh, and ignoring the three in the, uh, in the beat in the vals is much, much more difficult because it means you attack uh, on the beat and you continue with something else and then you stop. So it's like one, two, nothing, one, two, nothing. So it's much, much uh, more complicated to use that time signature in vals uh, if you're dancing. And then, of course, What's very, very common is uh, at the end of a... <laughs> yes, I just bumped my head. Be, be, be careful. It was not your impression that really yeah. happened. Be careful, yes. I think I'm going to put something in your head like a hat. Yeah, I just, I, I totally underestimate 
until too late, I'm just saying. And this is Joshua Jess. And uh, so basically, in, uh, the last time signature that we can play with in uh, with a bounce or as a dancer is to step with every single beat, one, two, three, and then of course, we never uh, stop on three, we always have a one after that, so it would be one, two, three, four. So this is a little bit how it looks. At the end of the phrase, bam, 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 and we go. Yes, this is a little bit of decoration that you can do. We're not going to show you that in detail. This would be uh, uh, another session, but we are going to go straight into the heart of what we are going to teach today, which is cadenas. So cadenas, of course, means chain or something which can be linked or looped, if you like. Uh, this is very, very vowels. Of course, you have a few cadenas in tango, but it's definitely, definitely vowels. Um, uh, typically, it's a three-step uh, sequence which can be looped into another one. Yes. So we are going to see a few of them, and uh, of course it's all playing with the embrace. Sometimes you have to have the embrace closed, sometimes you have to open the embrace uh, to create space for the hips to pass, and we are going to, we are going to have a look at how it works. So have, uh, let's have a look at um, the first one, and the reason we started with this one is because last Wednesday we had a class uh, which was specifically on Americana, on the Americana, which is if you come here, which is this position here, where our hips are roughly parallel to each other, not facing, but in the same alignment. So there's a slight V, if you like, which is very, very open V. This is not Americana, this would be an old show position. Americana is much wider, it's more here, and sometimes there's hip contact, sometimes not. Of course, the torso is going to be a little bit your partner, as usual, with your association to have a good connection. Okay, so this is the Americana, this is uh, what we're going to play with. So I'm going to show the sequence for leaders first, and of course the followers are going to be very similar. Um, in, uh, in all fairness, often in a cadena sequence in bass, when the leader is going forward, the follower is going back, but this time we're going to go for both because we are in Americana. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go forward in Americana, and I'm going to, maybe I can show you first. So, I'm going to go forward in Americana. Remember, the Americana is going to be with my right foot first. And I'm going to push the floor to let my partner go around me. Okay, so this is the first part of my lead. I'm going to send her there. We're going to have a look at the lead first uh, in a second. I'm going to continue walking with her. And I'm going to be what an embrace before I repeat one more time. One and two. Here, here, one and two. Here, one and two. Here, one and two. So a couple of pointers for leaders. First of all, it works if in your Americana you point your leg and your foot and you don't completely arrive in axis. Why? Because if you do, you'll run into a problem, which is that the, your partner is going to be very far away from you. And then it's very difficult to catch up, because yes, in one leg, in one step, you have to catch up with your back foot or back step. Yes, so, so I think it's important to be consistent with the leading. If you want to keep your follower close to you, don't send them away, because that's really hard for us to follow, mm -hmm. the contraindication. So, leaders, I'm going to be in America now. I'm going to invite my partner forward, I'm going to start inviting with my left ear, and I'm going to be in this position here. I'm going to do a step forward, I catch up with her back leg here, I'm going to lift her a little bit here, so that she understands there's a change of weight, which is the moment when I'm going to pivot on my left. And, and that's going to be a change of weight for me, yeah? I'm going to explain in a second. One, two, three, and... One, two, three. So let's do it without uh, partners for solo dancers to practice because the coordination, of course, is going to be important here. So I'm going to go, first of all, Americana. I dissociate here and I bring my left leg around. I increase the amount of dissociation. I'm lifting and as I'm dropping into my hip, I'm going to have this rotation here. And I repeat. So from here, 
one, two, three, more dispensation, and a pivot here. Forwards, around, and here. Here, around, and there. Okay, and each time I do, I have my weights left leg forward, I'm going to have a 180 degree rotation. If I'm going right leg forward, then I just let my partner pass. So let's do it in this angle. One, two, note I stay in the middle. I have a 10 meter rotation, I bring my hip, sorry, my feet together. I go forward to the left, and this is when I have a bit of a lift. I drop, and as I drop, I'm going to do a 180 degree turn. This is when leaders, all this practice of pivoting on the spot uh, is going to be helpful. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Follow us. Let's have a look. All right, so we start, uh, I'll show you with the uh, back to the camera. I think it's more helpful. So we have Americana. And from here, we're going to be indicated onto that side step. It's a small side step and it goes around the liver. Okay, I'll do it one more time. So, Americana and side. And this is when there is a little bit of pivot here. And we're going to go back, shifting the weight. Now, your partner is on this side, so it's important the upper body faces the partner. Okay, so, Americana, side. Yeah, pam, pam, pam. Side, big step, Americana, pivot side, and big step. Can I show it once with you? Yes. Uh, actually, let's do the back to the camera. Okay. So, one, two, three, four. Okay, shall we show them with the music for the timing and then give them some time to practice? Exactly. Like so, time? yes, but I would like to maybe uh, point out one thing is that the timing is not going to be on the beats as we just did, we are going to have a little acceleration. One, two, three, four, one. Yes, can you see here? The three point one is going to be a little bit quicker. So let me show you again. So I'll start in the Yes. With this one here, and we're going to go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Um, okay, can I just, uh, just to help the guys out, no. can I count that with the one, two, three? Count it. Yeah. And no, just first we got the music yesterday. No. Okay. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, three, one. Exactly. Yeah? Yes. So, the decoration or the little acceleration is done by the change of weight of the follower. Note that the leader, of course, is pivoting, so it just stays on the beats. But so the, there's an asynchronicity of step between the leader and the follower in this uh, different in this mm -hmm. specific cadena. Okay. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, three, one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, 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 one, two, uh, to see how it looks. And of course, yeah. if you are a solo dancer, what we like to, to practice is both roles, uh, you know, alternate, leading and pulling. Yeah, so let's maybe just show for a few moments and then we're gonna roll the music. Roll. roll. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> give you the rest of the song for you guys to actually practice to it. Mm -hmm.
compre una tarde paisaje lejano, el marco dorado y el tema otoñal. Que cuelgue en el muro, que acaso un retrato, que acaso un retrato que ya no está mal. Es tal vez por eso que si me angustia, tu color velado, tu sombra, tu gris, tu cielo pechado, de nubes y brumas, tu parque llorando con lluvia de ruido. ¿Quién será que en tu tremenda pintó la criatura otoñal del pinar? Y el saludo olvido, y el compil perdido, y el camino herido de azul y de soledad. ¿Quién será que una vista encontró como sos, y logró comprender tu color? Que anda, que anda buena, vio la pena pena, de la nube gris del camino azul del dolor de abril. viewers because I noticed that the video was interrupted earlier on there is a maximum I think of one hour that I can stream live so I use that and I believe that I'm live but can you please let me know Instagram people because we know that you guys on YouTube you, you are on we can see that but can you please Instagram crowd let us know whether we are still live and also this is for both crowds if you have any questions we will try uh, between now and the end of the class to respond as many as many as we can. Blah 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> so on these notes, we're going to have a look at another Galileo Cadena. So we hope this was clear. Um, again, it's very good if you're a solo dancer to practice by yourself. We're going to have a look at a Leo Cadena, which involves actually something simple, but it's very interesting when you put it together. So. As a leader, I'm going to have a bit of association to the left, and I'm going forward to the left. I do a side step, and I'm going to go pivot uh, 100 degrees with my foot, and I'm going to bring my right as a cross this way. I'm going to uncross, and I repeat. One, two, three, and I cross. Now note that I'm constantly dissociating towards the left, constantly associating towards the left to have this element of rotation there. So let's practice a few seconds. You're going to go forward to the left, step with the right, come back with the left, and this is going to enter into a cross, one cross, and I'm going to uncross myself, and I'm going to go repeat it. One, two, Three and one, two, three and one, two, three and. See my position here is to the left as a dissociation. Nice. Nice demonstration. So we, we are doing the same thing but uh, mirroring. So at different timings. Mm -hmm. So let's say that I am starting with that back step, and there's going to be a cicada. And I'm going to go forward, forward, collect another forward, pivot side, and in between each step there's a little bit of readjustment. And now back, that's going to be the saccada, so the leg is not collecting, but going through a small lapis. And continuing, forward, side, back, forward, forward, side, back, forward, forward, side, back, back. Now, just to have a few words on how the disassociation works, we are constantly giving contra movements from one step to the next. So we have that situation that your body is going from one side to the next, and we are const constantly changing that. So otherwise, we become very square in our movement, and this is what we want to try to avoid. So we want to try and have every time that I adjust, the hips, I also adjust the upper body. Okay? Yep. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Okay, so let's have a look at how it looks together. Um, the fourth step with my left is going to uh, coincide with a saccada. I'm going to give to my partner. This is when 
I leave it up to have this it's almost like a cross or a chord, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't depend on how you see it. And I'm going to make her step, and as she's stepping, I'm going to have my first chord step here. So let's maybe, without stopping, it's going to be one, two, and here I'm going to invite her into my space by associating to the left here. So that causes the cicada, yeah? So from the forward to the leader. So, of course, what's important here is to understand one very important principle for leaders is that you are um, going to invite your partner by dispensing your weight, not by putting her. So, what does it mean? Here, she's stepping, my foot is right next to hers. And here I'm going to invite her not by pulling her forward with my hands and arms, but by just stepping back. And she will understand that because of my axis displacement, she needs to come forward. Now, because I do a very big step backwards, or with a big step backwards, she's going to feel the space and she's entering. It's very, very likely if you are in a couple and you're a follower, if you've never done this cadena, that you feel there is no space. So two things can happen. First of all, the step of the leader is too small when going back. Second reason, you're afraid of stepping on him. So it's very likely that the first time you can't really see much because you don't look down and you feel there is no space. But the fact that we're actually drawing around you, around you, is an indication that we're creating space for you in between our legs here. So this is what, I would, what we would call the lady Sakala. And it's very nice if the lady pushes a little bit, not too much of course, you know, uh, but a little bit so that there is this element of form. Mm -hmm. I want to either pin out a little bit or send a, 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 a white cross. It's up to you, but there's this element of continuity here. So, of course, this uh, it might feel in the beginning that Sakada for the followers might feel a little bit counterintuitive because we are not used to walk right into the wither space. However, you if you dreamt about it for a long time, I have no, no idea what you're talking no. about. I take no responsibility for what you just said. Step, <laughs> no, 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 okay. Anyway, so it's a little bit counterintuitive, but because there is a rotation of the upper body and there is the slight displacement around me, that is a clear indication that I am going to take over the space. It will not be comfortable if there is no rotation and there is a direct sending me into the space of the leader. So what we, what we were talking just now, it will be really, really helpful if the movement is going slightly around the follower, so she can then go around too. Here, one, two, and here I really, see where I put my foot here, really around, so that she has mm -hmm. the feeling that she has space in between my legs here. And also because the upper body is open and it's not here, I then feel that I have space to enter with my axis and therefore I'm going to invade his space here, which is leading on purpose, and that is going to create the saccade. Let's show it. So slowly first. One, two, three, four. 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 Now I have a little comment for leaders. An additional challenge, of course, for you <coughs> is to manage the fact that your space is limited. For us, of course, this is uh, a small space for valves, uh, which, which means that we have to adapt uh, the, the actual footwork. And what this means is when you're going to go here, it's more like you go around in this direction as opposed to around you. You could actually go around you this way, of course, but it's not what you want to do because you want to constantly turn and make it in this way here. One, two, three, and one, two, three. So I have to constantly manage my position in this way when I lead this to the follow-up. So we have a few questions uh, on YouTube. Yes. Uh, you may want to have a look. Uh, this one, the best step going around the leader thing for a person who wants to come back. Yeah, maybe answer that one. Another one has a one. But 
as the river did to make the followers taste their first supplier. Okay, so yes, it's a good question. Um, it all comes back to follower's technique. Basically what happens, so the question is, why does the, the follower enter into Sakada? You know, in other terms, why is she waiting a bit for the space to clear? It's all about body position, uh, big body respective position. Look here. Here, I'm going to place my foot here, and I make sure that my torso is just rotating, but is not going back. If I'm going back, she's going to step here. So the idea is, as I'm going here, I'm going to stay where I am, and only now I'm going to open to invite her. So there is a moment when I'm doing my pivot, I stay there, I prepare my leg, and then I open for the second to happen. So leaders, you have a lot to do that moment. <laughs> it's complicated because, of course, the follower they just, you know, of course, have to enter, but we have to plan ahead and understand in terms of the space we have, that we have enough space for the cadena. So yes, it's challenging for leaders. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for the solo dancers, we will show you in a second, but for the solo dancers, remember you can do this exercise, it can be a little bit confusing uh, if you don't understand the structure at first to do this exercise without a follower. However, if you get it clear what you need to do, then at some point when you connect with someone is going to make sense. So we really use this time to understand the lines, where I need to go, when is my pivot, when is my, what's my upper body doing in relationship to my lower body. So we have that uh, counter movement, we can work on that. And of course you can do also followers, leaders, whoever is solo can practice both directions. Of course, it's always you know, very, very good to practice by yourself, so that's when you get to do it with your partner, it's much, much cleaner. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's have a look with music. So the music is again uh, Alberto Castillo, as you are. Yeah, turn my way, killers, and I'm going to enter into a back option, sending my power around me, and I'm going to enter with my left to have the sacada again. This is the initiation. One more time. Turn off for leaders, Sakara here. And now I enter to the Kalina. One, two. Here I stay. Little bit. And of course, what's interesting is to accelerate it. As you can see, there was a lot of adjustment uh, for the followers part, I believe also for the leaders, but yes. there's a lot of adjustment on the standing leg that needs to pivot every single time in order to keep going in cadena around the space. And of course, add the element of rotation in the room. So it's a beautiful cadena, uh, which is quite often used uh, for vows. Um, and the way we did it just now is rather than going on the one, we went on the one, two, three. So it's going to be one, two, three, 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 one. In this case, as you notice, the steps were smaller because you have a lot less time for each step. So the priority is not to make big steps, especially with a small space like this, the priority is to move your axis clearly onto the next displacement and still pivot each time, still have that adjustment. Interestingly, with a bit of speed, uh, it will help you a little bit, especially when it comes to inviting your partner to do the saccada here, because somehow it feels like it's more, it makes more sense to continue the movement here. Uh, rather than just like, you know, stop at every time. So, this is something that you can do. Should we do it one let's, time? Let's give them some time, no? Do you okay, want let's, to let's yeah, do it like uh, 10, 10 seconds yeah. and then I'll yeah? Okay. Thank you. 
which is another cadena that we'd like to show you, which again plays with the fact that we have triplets in the song, in the music, uh, and we're going to have this structure here where we're going to go forward as a leader with a right here. We're going to scoop and use the same thing that we did for beginners, which is a little bit of down movement here. But here we're not going to change on the spot, we're going to do a side step, and we're going to pivot so that we are facing this direction. So notice it's not a very, very big pivot. It's maybe something like 90 degrees or even less. So this is how it goes. One, two, three. And then I repeat. One, two, I go up on the toes a bit. And three, I relax on this, uh, on this uh, step. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So here I'm not to the... yes. Here I'm not looking at musicality just yet or the timing. I'm just looking at the footwork. We are going to have a look at the timing uh, in a second. So this is how it works. I'm going to go forward with the right. I'm going to go a little bit down. I push a bit more with the left. And I go up on the toes, I open, and I kind of put my foot here. Note that I've pivoted a little bit with these two steps. One, two, three, 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 and so on. I like it when this is done with the correct cat quality. It's going on the toes at the end of the season. You like it? Yeah, I really like it. <laughs> like. <laughs> so you want to show yeah, me so the following thing? Yeah, of course, okay. So uh, in this situation, uh, depending where you're starting the step, of course, but let's say, uh, let's say we start from the same situation of starting with the left leg back, okay, would be the right leg for the leaders. We are going to go here, uh, big accents, one, two, Three, adjust on the last one. Step, step, step. So we would say there's a bit of a diagonal here, depending on how much we travel in the space. It could be more linear this way, uh, or we could travel more back each time. And this is at slightly 45 degrees in space, let's say. Then I'm going to go into neutral here, facing forward, and I'm going to adjust the next 45 degrees to my right. Okay, I know it sounds very precise, but I think it really helps in terms of spatial How much? awareness. How much? 45. 40? <laughs> okay, I'll give you 42. Well, 43. I think ultimately, the leader is going to decide <laughs> how many degrees, okay? No, yes, we all know that. Give me a better price. Better <laughs> price. Right. So, yam, pam, pam. Yam, pam, pam. So, big scoop. Small adjustment, it's almost a step under, on, on the same spot, and adjust shifting the weight to the right. Shall we show it together? Absolutely. So, I'm going to be on my left so that I can attack with my right forward, and I'm going to scoop a little bit downwards, here, and two, here, and two, here, and two, here, and two. Two, 
So this is basically called bi-band uh, or back and forth. If you like, we have lots of bi-band in tango and vals. Uh, it's very, very pretty. If you look at the structure, it's not that complicated, but actually it's very musical if you catch the right moment in the song. Mm -hmm. So uh, you might have observed, just the last time we demonstrated the step, that there is a lot of the, um, adjustment on the upper body for the change of direction. Mm -hmm. Can we show the same way we were showing before? Okay. So which is this way here, and going that way and then coming back. Okay. Thank you. So from here, now look at what happens here. My upper body, you see that it was, didn't take it with me, but it stayed. So it's like the Ocho. When Ocho back, I need to keep my, the front of my body facing my partner all the time. So from here, you see, I am still facing. I don't stop facing my partner throughout the sequence. For example, this would be not facing him anymore. This is facing him, uh -huh. and this would be disconnecting here, but that's we're trying not to do. So let's have a look. And let's do it also. M with the music right now. Look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, let's, let's try, try with the music. music. All right, music. Uh, how about we go into the Angelis? All right, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try. Why? So let me uh, say a few words about the musicality. Yes, you're going a bit too quick. So what we showed earlier... I'm sorry guys, I, yes. I can't help it. This summer is, you know, it's just too much, you have too to much energy. have to bring in the energy. So what we showed you is on the beat, one, two, three, this is how we practice. But of course here, what we're going to do, we are going to do uh, to use the uh, single pair in the valves, which means that we're not going to do one, two, three, and one, Oh, sorry, I should, I should have said one, 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 one. I'm going to, to use one, three, one, one, three, one. One, three, one, one, three, one. Yes? We're using what we did earlier, also for beginners, which is using the three in the bar uh, to play a bit with the song. So now we can, yes, now we can do it. So actually, we should not have put the music on because we were not really ready to show it. Hello, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we both jumped just you know just saying right, just right. saying <laughs> Okay now we try One little thing for leaders so that you can play. Of course, the structure is relatively simple. One here, one here. But I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cross to make it extra exciting. This is what has going to work. So rather than going here and then I come here, instead of doing a fourth step after the pivot, I'm going to bring my foot right here. Why? Because basically it's going to have this element of pendulum in the movement, which is going to look like here, from, from here. Can you see? So it's actually something that you can do. Uh, let's have a look for a few seconds. One, bum, bum, one, bum, bum, one, and then here. You can either do a little voleo or just uncross as you like. One, two, three, E, one, two, three, E, one, two, three, one. Two, three. Back to camera. E, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, so here I'm kind of 
bringing a little cross as a little decoration. Should I try? Yeah. And one, two, three, 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 one, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Do you want to show something for us? Yes, of course, I want to show Adorno as well. Sure. So, uh, there is different things you can do here. I'm just going to give you one suggestion. Uh, of course, it, this is not Adorno's class, so we, we can't spend too much time on this. So, I'm just going to give you one possibility for now. Which would be, for example, if you shift the weight here, you can then extend it like forward. So, ya pam 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 e. Yam pam 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 e, yam pam 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 e, yam pam 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 e. Should we try together? Of course. So one last little piece of advice for leaders, when you do your little cross here, make sure that you take enough time for the leg to come back, yes? So if it's quick, then maybe just pulling around, but make sure that you don't start with the toes so forward mm -hmm. as you cross. Uh, I think the most important thing, and if you agree, I think you will, but the most important thing is to respect the timing, the tempo, any adornments that you want to include, it should not interfere with the beat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so I believe um, Welcome we on. are almost I, 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 I honestly cannot believe, guys, how quick I still I am still not over it. It's going so quickly the time, always. Maybe you should do workshops of two hours. How about that? Uh, <laughs> well, what do you guys think? No, I am not sure. Maybe, not really, not sure. Okay. maybe, maybe we can do some special. Maybe a workshop special. marathon, a marathon of workshop where we teach eight hours straight. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, that's right, an idea. What, what do you think? That's I an mean, idea. That's an idea, no? Like yeah, we, I guess we could, but <laughs> we, we need to hear whether this I'm is something that sure. people would embrace. But anyway, guys, if you have any suggestions for workshops or special events. Please let us know. You can DM us on Instagram. Let me show you before we wrap up the class. Let me show you where you can go. So I'm going to show this way first. So we both have accounts. If I slide that from one screen to the next, <laughs> I believe that everybody gets to see it. Yeah, so it's Paulo Duarte Tango and Tangito Academy. There you go, all right, and then of course if you want to uh, get back to some of the classes that you uh, have not had the chance to see. So we have now 16 of them, ranging from um, uh, technique, about adorno, adornos, about balance, pivots, to milonga, slow tangos, fast tangos, a lot of topics already covered, so have a look if you're interested. So okay, we are going to demonstrate what we did. We are coming back very soon for another class, which is after tomorrow, Tuesday, Tuesday. for twelve thirty p.m. UK lunchtime. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with uh, the artist? Yes. Yes. Okay. And don't go away yet, guys, because we have a few more announcements. <laughs> <laughs>
very much for coming today. We hope you have a good time. This is vast, and I, I uh, uh, understand that it can be a bit challenging because it takes a bit more space and tangle most of the time. But all the cadenas that we had a look at, you can make them a little bit more compact by having a bit less displacement. So guys, thank you so much again for being with us today. We're just going to show you the link where you can purchase a ticket. Please do so, because in order for us to continue doing all this work for you, we need also to get something back, okay? And if you can't, uh, for some special reason, because if coronavirus, then please just contribute with whatever you can. And if you really, really cannot contribute financially, then please leave us a nice review. Okay, so I'm going to show you the link. And we will see you very, very soon on a Tuesday for the Tango Workout, lunchtime, 12.30 UK time. Okay, so again, we wish you a very, very good evening or afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Uh, and if you are in lockdown, uh, of course, you can spend your, if it's raining and you're lockdown, you can, <laughs> you can have someone a little bit nuts around to keep you company. Okay. okay, guys, we love you. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you. Bye. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.